seen your face before You try to hide But you can't no more Afraid you are To allow seeing The beautiful That hides beneath Been searching For a long while Broken No longer see a smile Can't imagine a life Without sorrow and pain Hold your head down Filled with so much shame Broken, scared, abused, used Light, appreciated, love the door of past experience play hide and go seek with my existence encapsulating my freedom and blurring my vision it's hard to see beauty through glass sustained with sin or most of the whispers of failure that come from within there has to be a way to begin again to reverse the curse of mistakes past to see how full the glass to find the joy that this time will last but there's no remedy for insecurities or keys to escaping mental captivity no recipe for spiritual healing Yet, I'm searching, cause I do believe, no wait, I insist, that there has to be something greater than this, I just have to find you. Thank you for this day, we thank you for this beautiful day that you have made, Father, we thank you just for being God in our lives, Father, and we thank you, Lord, just for this opportunity to come together as we celebrate motherhood, as we celebrate the gifts that you've given to us, the gifts that you've placed in our lives and the gifts of love that's continually shared, Father. We know that you were in the midst in making everything come together smoothly, Father. Father, we pray, Lord, that you just have your way in this place. I want to welcome everybody here today. I know that you guys could have chose other things to do with your phenomenal moms. So even if you have not birthed the child, you are still a mother because I'm sure that you're looking after your nieces, your nephews, your friends, children, the children that are in the neighborhood, and all the things. We just were born with this instinct that tells us to be motherly. We have that loving instinct. We have that thing that keeps us going even when our body says no. I say audiences for over 15 years through transformational coaching and teaching. Shamar is the founder of Pressed Oil Life Coaching Institute, Inc., a nonprofit organization which has empowered literally thousands of women through life coaching since 1999. Besides being an author, business leader, life coach, radio host, good night, she's like, hey, man. And motivational speaker, Shamar is an officer's wife and mother. And we would just love to give a warm welcome to Miss Shamara Cox. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's fine. I am in the room with some of the most beautiful women I have had the 
the honor of being in the room with. And Shawana is a, a beautiful woman of God. I have fell in love with her. And she's not going nowhere. I don't care what happens. <laughs> me and her being her in this day to win it for a long time, okay? But the one thing that I cherish the most is I'm a mother of three. Uh, my oldest daughter right now has acted like she has lost her mind. You know, but God is good. Listen, God is good. And what I want to talk about today is I have this message complete. I was so excited. I had this message all typed up and ready to go. And I practice and practice. You know what you got to do when you speak. Get ready for it. Prepare. And then as I was driving here, the Holy Spirit says, stop. Transparency births transformation. And there are women right now that feel like, am I, am I the only one that feels this? Feel in some areas? Do I feel like I should have done more? Do I feel like I don't get my children? They surely don't get me. I mean, what is it? I mean, what can I, I feel like I, I should have done? I should have pushed, I should have pressed, I should have done a little bit more with this thing. Listen, everybody, look at your sister sitting next to you and say, Stop. 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 Tell her, say, Stop. 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 You are perfect. <laughs> Tell her, say, You are perfect. <laughs> Where are you at? Because it's not about being perfect. Tell her it's about being perfected. Amen. Tell her I'm being perfected. And say that with confidence. <laughs> Listen, your children did not come out the womb unless yours did and mine didn't with a book that said this is exactly what's going to happen. When they turn 12, they're going to act crazy. They're going to act crazy again. At 15 and 18, they're going to lose their mind. At 35, they're going to move back home again. <laughs> no, and nothing came out that way. Nothing came out that way. Amen. Learn any ways in. My 18-year-old, to this point, listen, she has some areas of flaws. Who doesn't have flaws? Mm -hmm. Nobody stands up here flawless. Nobody's saying that. But what I'm saying is that she's doing things that I did not raise her to do. The Bible says raise up a child in the way that they should go. And when they are older, they shall not depart from that what? All right. So I did the raising the way I believe that she, she ought to go. But she has surely departed from that way. <laughs> But I love her anyway. But I want to talk to you about what I've learned in this thing. I've learned so much. <laughs> men, are men handle things differently. Brother, you can test that. Men handle things differently than women. We're like, oh, I know she went off, but I, my baby, she's hurting. She needs me. I'm still a mother. My husband's like, mother, you better put that in the closet. Take that car bag. Get that cell phone. You know, so I, I'm still in the I love her phase, and I just want to help her reach out to her. But I realize at this point I have got to learn to let go in that distance. Because let me tell you something. God cares more about her than I ever could. He's more in love with her future and in love with her and knows her better than me. And I brought her here. Three days worth of labor. Do you believe that she give me all this trouble? I mean, I had two surgeries. I was in a wheelchair for six months and a walker for eight months after I had that child. She got the nerve to act crazy now. I love what Shawana said earlier. Let me give you some kudos, Shawana. I, you know I love you from the bottom of my heart. I have been through some very difficult transitions here in Indianapolis. And Shawana had to write that for me. I mean, head on chest, crying in the house, no wig, no weave, no makeup on her chest, crying, hurting, hurting with what I was going through. Because it hurts. And she's been right there for me. And I was going to say, I love you and thank you for that. And Shawana, you and your team put this together. And thank you for that. I am impressed. Amen. Bless you. It's good measure. Press down, shake. It's coming back to you, okay? All right. I remember, let me start. I remember praying. This is years ago. My daughter's now turning 19. I remember praying and asking the Lord. This is many years ago. She's probably around 12. And I started seeing a shift in her personality. And I started looking to pray, pray and ask God, what do you want? This is what I want for her. I wanted her to go to college. And I want her to meet a, a, a man of God and a God in the man, all the above. You know, I want her to have the beautiful home. I want her to be spirit led and spirit filled, a smart woman, beautiful young lady. I want her to be happy in her life, fulfilled in her marriage. This is what I want for her. I'm praying these things. And in my heart, I'm thinking I'm praying right. Because I'm a mom. And those are right things that I wanted for my daughter. Who doesn't want good things for their child? And God said, in the midst of my prayer, would you stop? Because you come to me and ask me and basically told me everything you want for her, but never asked me what I want. You created, you made a Picasso painting of her purpose. And never asked me, what does that look like? So then I read designed my prayer, and I came to God and said, okay, you tell me what is it that you want for your daughter, because she's yours first. You gave her to me all alone, and I have to give her back to you. What, what do you want for her? And that's when he began to show me, actually, her falling. Whew, falling. And I thought, this is not what I had in 
my, in my mind for her, her falling, you know, the heartache and the things that she's going through. And the Lord spoke to me and said, I'm building a platform for her because there's a generation of people and children that don't know me, but they will not relate to you, but they will relate to her. And if she has not gone through anything, if she has had no trials, tribulations, and no platform, there's no anointing. So I'm preparing her to reach who you cannot. Is that okay with you? Yes. Being a mother is not about being perfect. It's about being perfected. You will never make all the right choices. Just be encouraged that the choices you make came from a right motive. Your heart was right when you made the choice. I heard someone say, Charles Stanley said, you be obedient to what God asks you to do and leave the consequences up to him. That's what I choose doing when I'm raising my children. It's not easy when they're telling you, you don't understand me, you don't do anything for me, you don't help me, you don't this, you don't that, and everything any mother wants to help. But you realize you can't right now because I will enable them to stay where they are and I want the best for them. So I've got to release them. And these are not just our birth children. I am a mentor to 30 young ladies through an organization called Bling Sorority. It stands for Brave, Legendary, Influential, Necessary, and Gorgeous. And I created this organization for young ladies who live in the darkness on a daily basis. Who don't have anybody to tell you're beautiful. You won't make it out of this. The neighborhood doesn't dictate your future. You dictate your future. You don't. The neighborhood doesn't. You're coming out of this. You will go to college. You will get a job. You will not live there the rest of your life. There was no one in that household. Some of these women, these the young ladies didn't even know their mothers and fathers. They've been living place to place to place. Or one young lady that I had, her mother was a prostitute, and she's prostituting, leaving her with her 10 children. Mm. While she's trying to graduate, she has a 3.8 GPA. She's trying. She's trying. What this organization does, it gives girls visibility into a very different future. A very different future. Sometimes all you need to do is take somebody out of where they are, put them where they think they ought to be, and give them a taste of it. And they're like, I can never go back now. I'm going to college. So put them in a car they've never seen before. You know, put them in a house. I'm like, what? Are you kidding me? Yes. If I can do it, you can do it, but let me show you how I did it. That's what Bling does for young ladies. So not only my mother actually to physically mother, but I'm also a mother to with young ladies that are not mine. But does that change my love for them? No. No. Absolutely not. So even if you're not a mother by birth, doesn't mean anything. You still have a passionate love for the young lady. Mm -hmm. Two is, it's not about knowing everything. You really, just listen. It's not about knowing everything. It's about knowing the God of everything. Mm -hmm. It's not about knowing everything when you're raising your children. It's about knowing the God that knows everything. Because, see, I can think one thing about my daughter. I can choose to try to help her in a situation or circumstance. But when I go into prayer and I ask the Lord to help me, he shows me things I don't Number three, Amen. being a mother is not about being fearless. I don't know if anybody's ever told you you would never have fears in mother's life. That's a lie <laughs> in the pits of hell. You will have fear as a mother. But you know what? It's not about walking fearless. It's about being faithful. Amen. Being faithful. Faith-filled as a mother. No matter what I see right now. I'm not going to get in all the testimony of what my daughter's doing, but if I did... Y'all would look at me and say, I don't know how you stand up here right now being encouraged talking about her because it doesn't look good. You guys, she went all the way to the other side. Mm. Jail, I mean, just all the way. Drugs, just all the way to the other side. And, and, and all with the influence of a young man influenced her that way. All the way. You know, but I have to be faith, full faith to believe she's going to come back around to me. Oh, this is where I had to loosen up, you guys. This was my this was my issue here. It's not about controlling our children. This was my issue. I, I'm a driver out to make it happen. You know, if our company's not reaching my financial goal, what else do we need to do to make it go there? You know, I, I, I'm, I'm very driven. But you can't use that philosophy with your children. They're not a business deal. You know, they're human beings. And it was not about pushing or driving her. You know what it was about, you guys? Molding her. Using my words as tools to build her up and not build her down or break her down when I felt she wasn't doing what I thought she ought to be doing. When I felt that she wasn't doing what I thought mm -hmm. she ought to be doing. But she was doing exactly what she ought to be doing because she was in the perfect will of God. Now, it's learning to lead and learning to let go. It's learning to lead our children and learning to let go. You know what someone once told me? 
They said, whatever you do in moderation, your children will do in excess. So if you cuss in moderation, one of our kids is going to cuss in excess. If you lie in moderation, one of our kids is cutting up lying in excess. Whatever, good or bad, they will do above what we do. Good or bad. Because they watch us. They watch how we live. They, they are closest. Uh, listen to this. They are in the room, in the house with us when nobody else is. When we take out the, the speaker face, the business face, the hair, all that's gone, our children are right there. How we respond, what we say, how we think, how we speak, they see everything. Amen. So it's inside. It's on the inside that they look at. So on the inside. A vegan mother is a battle of unconditional love, but it's also a battle of unconditional truth. We got to tell them the truth. Being a mother is hard because you got to say, listen, where you are right now, I've been down that road, and I'm going to tell you where it's going to lead you. And you may not like that answer, but the truth is the truth is the truth. And it's not going to change. This is where that road is going to take you. And sometimes they don't like that answer, you guys. But we still have to give it to them. It is. Being a mother, again, is not just what we say. It's what we do. And being a mother, number eight, is not always faith. Motherhood is a miracle. Because we did not kill our children in the process. Being a mother, you guys, is not about pity. It's about prayer. It's not about pitying our children. Oh my gosh, I can't believe she's doing what she's doing. Oh my Lord, I wanted her to change. No, 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 stop. Get God loves her more. God wants more for him or her. You know what? Get in your prayer closet. You lift them up before God and you say, you know what, Lord? I know the plans you have for them are good. They are not evil. They're to give her or him a future and an expected end. Now, I may not know what that expected end is, but I'm trusting you that you know what that expected end is. Being a mother is powerful. Powerful. Your words are like water to a dry desert. Your words to your children, no matter what my daughter or my other two have gone through, my husband can say something to them, but when she comes back and I say something to her, it, it's waterworks, it's love, it's give me hugs, it's rest on your chest. It's, it's, a different, it's a different feeling from a mother to a father. That's why your position as a mother, biological or not, is so powerful. Your smile is all they require sometimes. Sometimes look at my kids and smile. And lastly, like your mother is not a destination because they always come back. I got an email right here. I got another one. <laughs> they always come back. It is a journey. It's a journey of ups and downs. It's a journey of victories and triumphs. It's a journey of love and frustration, of passion and foolishness. It's the best roller coaster ride I've ever taken in my entire life. I wouldn't change it for the world. And I just want to say today, be encouraged as a mother, biological or not. Your labor is not in vain. Even though you may not have awards that are given out to you, it's all right. Your children and your heart are your reward. Your children and your heart are your reward. Today, I just want to encourage you and inspire you as a mother. I love you. And our winner is Joyce Hayes.
Delisa Huerta. <laughs> Because she's my best friend. <laughs> oh, 
used to do everything together, but you know, um, now she can't get around as much as she used to. And um, I just thank God for allowing her to be a part of my life and me being a part of her. I do have to say this. Um, my mother is such a blessing. I mean, I can recall when I was like 14, I was pregnant. And um, I remember my mother saying, are you pregnant? I'm like, no. <laughs> and she's like, we're going to walk to this hospital around the corner. And if I'm pregnant, I'm going to beat your butt. Um, she was there. She was a mother to me, to my child. She taught me how to be a mother at that age. And um, I can proudly say that I feel like I did a good job. I thank you. Um, I could not have done it without you. And my mother's my best friend. So, so you know, to all the mothers, I know everyone here that is blessed for their mom to still be here. I know that you feel the same way. So, thank you. Thank you. I would like to um, recognize my mom, Mildred Cunningham. So I just wanted to get up and say, Mama, I love you. And I pray every day that God continues to bless you with good health and to be the continue to be the great woman that you are. You know, even when my dad was sick, she was there. She was there for us all the time. So even like I said, even though she didn't get it, she is a phenomenon. She takes care of the people in the neighborhood, they want something to eat. They come to her house. <laughs> so um, I just wanted to get him. I couldn't sit down. I thank God for it. Because I know that there's some that don't. And I'm like, she went down. I don't know what I would do if, I, if she wasn't out there. You know, they bring us up so that when, they're, when they need help, then you should be able to be here for them. So, Mom, I love you. I love you. I love you. <laughs> Thank you. 